Fuck you for voting for this. If you ever feel the insatiable urge to kill yourself, make sure you watch these movies back to back sober. If you manage to survive without slitting your wrists, I will consider admitting that I'm gay. But until I get 50 responses to this video showing that they did indeed do this and survive, I will keep pretending like I fuck women. My Little Pony the movie is the worst thing ever created in the history of anything ever. The Emoji movie is also the worst thing ever created in the history of- You. Moron anything ever. Both of these are movies that came out in 2017, further reinforcing that there's been way more shitty movies this year than there were good ones. My Little Pony is this stupid show that a bunch of fat homosexuals watch in their parents' basements. Contrary to what the source material behind this show is, being toys for four-year-old girls, the bulk of the franchise's fan base is composed of 20 to 30-year-old men. I did not do research about this series before going in because that would imply that I'm a fucking faggot. So when it comes to what the actual fuck was even happening in this movie, I honestly have no clear answers. Alright, let's take it from the top. A bunch of stupid ponies, some of which have wings and some of which don't, for no discernible logical reason, live in a magical kingdom where everything is gay. In this land of the gay, everyone has a tattoo on their ass that fucking nobody ever addresses. There's a random bear just hanging out there and a midget dragon that I guess I'm just supposed to accept as a thing in this universe. The magical gay kingdom is run by a group of flamboyant homosexual women who do pretty much nothing throughout the course of the movie. One of these flamboyant homosexual women is called Fag. That's not her actual name, but I can't be fucked to remember a single one of these characters, and when I say characters, I mean that in the loosest way possible. So Fag and her dragon, who is one of the only confirmed males in this movie, go to the other homosexuals and make a proposal. If the black bitch and the white bitch could just, you know, fuck with the sun and moon cycles for their party, that would be great. I mean, it would only completely destroy the tides in the entire state of the planet for several hours, but holy shit, would it be cool. The homosexual committee is totally against this, and one of them says, This is clearly out of our hooves. Please go fuck yourself, you stupid cunt. So Fag goes back to the city where we're introduced to a snazzy cast of characters that nobody fucking cares about. They proceed to sing one of the many totally useless songs that serve only to pad out the length of this stupid piece of shit movie. If you took all the dumb songs out of this, the movie would be like 40 minutes. That's like half of the movie. So if you skip over the songs, you might actually come out of this with some level of sanity left. Conveniently after singing a song about nothing, a flying boat comes in to ruin everyone's day. The flying boat is home to a pony called Cunt. Cunt is a stupid bitch that blames everyone else for her own problems. Sounds like someone else I remember. Cunt decides that because she's a cunt, she has to use her cunt powers, which boils down to having monkey monster people chase around everyone, while she throws hand grenades grenades at people that turn them into stone for some reason. Fag narrowly escapes in a spectacular fashion where the blue one saves her but is also turned to stone in the process. Yet somehow the blue one shows up completely unharmed like a minute later, so... Oh, also I forgot that there's this pop star pony that's important for some reason despite everyone who watched it forgetting her within seconds of being introduced. While looking this up, I also found out that Michael Pena was in this movie. Why, Michael? Why? Anyway, everyone decides they need to go to the Queen Hippo because nobody ever questions how that could ever help them. So they find a map out of nowhere and cross a perilous desert to find a city in the middle of nowhere. So there's a lot of pop culture references in this movie, like one from The Shining and another one that pretty much rips off Treasure Planet. Because four-year-old girls would totally know about those things, right? Why did grown men like this? So back in the gay kingdom, Cunt talks to a hologram of a monkey man. Monkey man needs the power from the unicorns to power his thingy majigger so he can dick around with it at the end of the movie. But Cunt only captured three of the homosexual unicorns. Now all that remains is Fag. So Cunt goes across the earth to find Fag and her accomplices who are currently being seduced by a lovely, lovely cat boy. Cat boy brings them to his home where he can presumably introduce them to the concept of Yif. But instead of having the world's biggest furry ex brony orgy, the ponies randomly pull the information out of their asses that the Hippo Queen isn't actually the Hippo Queen, they're actually looking for the Hippogriff Queen. It's an honest mistake. I mean, they're just two totally different species. The Hippogriffs live on a mountain in the middle of nowhere that they can see from the Catboy's window, something of which Catboy denies is actually there despite them looking right at it. But their cover's been blown. Cunt comes to kill everyone and the party of faggots narrowly escapes on a treasure planet ship. They're almost immediately caught and threatened to be thrown off the ship, but then they take a break because lunch. Wait a minute, so you have a group of stowaways that you know is in your best interest to just kill, but you invite 
fight them for lunch because you're on the clock? That sounds exactly like something I would do. Only I wouldn't give them my lunch. Fuck you. So the ponies convinced them that instead of being productive members of society, they should be pirates again where they can rape, pillage, and murder in the name of having fun. Everyone is so excited about this that the idiot ponies decide to throw a party that entails them literally broadcasting their position to the entire planet. Cunt and her own flying warship go in to capture them, but they jump out a window without any kind of plan and pull a parachute out of their asses. Meanwhile, Cunt goes on a rampage and kills everyone, but not really because this is a show intended for fragile fat men whose greatest literary achievement is reading the Warriors books. So they all go into the mountain and decide to jump in a pool of water because they saw something swimming in it. At no point do they ever feel it appropriate to ask if that's a good idea and they all drown and die. The end. No wait, bubbles! Then they meet a flamboyant princess mermaid horse bird who thinks to herself, why don't I bring these strangers who might not be good people into my home? Her mother, a white mermaid horse bird with a black people voice, points out why this was a retarded idea, then she shows them the funk. Well, maybe I can help you. I got the funk. Yeah, I know. You're very funky, Greg. No, no, you don't understand. I mean, I got the funk right here. It's in this box. The funk is what turned them into mermaids when... Um... Hmm. Actually, I don't even remember what they turn into mermaids for. I will admit I was not entirely sober during this movie, and I did partake in some of the smoking of the devil's lettuce, but I was at least moderately capable of processing some of what was going on. But I genuinely don't think they made an adequate explanation for why they decided to become mermaids. Also, they need to funk to save the gay kingdom because... Why? So they decide to go home, which hurts the feelings of the stupid bitch whose only friends are clams. I think she's symbolic for all the people that are fans of this movie. So most of them go play with her to make her feel like she isn't the most miserable character ever written. Meanwhile, Fag decides to try and steal the funk for herself, which gets them banished from the funky kingdom, where Fag decides to tell everyone to go fuck themselves. She's then captured and brought onto Cunt's spaceship, where it's revealed that Cunt was once a unicorn like you until she decides you take a bear cave to the face. So basically, she was playing with a ball, and the ball went into the bear cave, and she went into the bear cave to get the ball, and then a bear ripped her face off, and she blames other people for it. So despite doing that of her own volition and being permanently maimed for it, even after her friends presumably didn't agree to doing that, she blames literally everyone else for her own problem. So wait, you're the one that got yourself fucked up by the bear, but when people don't want to hang out with your stupid ass anymore, it's their fault? And then it's revealed that Monkey man vowed to restore her head penis if she brings Fag back to the gay kingdom. He gets his powers back and predictably doesn't grant her wish and instead of doing something evil, he decides to fuck around with the sun and moon for a while because I guess he had nothing better to do. I mean, I guess it's comparatively better to making another Death Star. Meanwhile, everyone else breaks into the gay kingdom and kicks everyone's asses. And then there's a tornado and Fag gets sucked into it, only for Fag to come down a little bit later and not die. Instead, Cunt saves them from an untimely demise despite having no reason to do so and Monkey falls to his death and dies. Like literally, he dies. I'm pretty sure he was the hero of this movie. So then Emo Bitch starts singing and they have a dance off and I really wanted to kill myself after watching this. Now many of you may be asking how possibly could something be worse than this movie? Well I asked myself that same question and stumbled upon everyone's favorite movie to hate the Emoji Movie. So once upon a time Sony had the tough decision to choose between a movie about emojis or the Popeye movie. And since Sony is great at making decisions they decided to throw out the idea of the Popeye movie in favor of the Emoji Movie because they felt that that was a really good idea. And just like the Ghostbusters movie, they decided to push a political agenda and promised that the Emoji Movie was going to be a beautiful takedown of our president. And judging by the ratings of this movie, I'd say that the war against Donald Trump is going pretty well. <laughs> You are 
fake news. Well, you know, about as well as a movie with a lower rating than The Room can be, but hey, that's something, right? So the Emoji Movie is a giant ad that makes me never want to use any of these apps and websites ever again for the rest of my life. We're introduced to meh, a meh who can't meh because he's a non-conformist. So rather than just encouraging people to watch Dead Poets Society, a movie that's actually good and does this idea a billion times fucking better, Sony decided that the best way to reach out to the kids is to make something so bad that not even they could possibly enjoy it. So in a very Osmosis Jones fashion, Sony thought that we could relate to this kid who's quite possibly the dumbest character ever written. So let me lay down the premise for you. This kid wants to bone this other bitch, but he's too much of a pussy to ask her out. And since writing is now outdated, a claim that the movie actually makes, and in retrospect, that's almost as perfect an explanation behind the making of this movie as Ryan Johnson throwing and breaking the Millennium Falcon as a child compared to The Last Jedi. So let me get this straight. He's too scared to send an emoji, but he was perfectly capable of acquiring her phone number. You know, I'm starting to think that Sony really does believe that writing is evil since they clearly aren't capable of doing it. So Meh, being a nonconformist and all, makes other emoji faces because he's different and being different is inclusive and inclusivity is special. So he goes to the phone store and immediately fucks up in front of everyone. Before he's taken to court, he meets Shit, who is voiced by none other than fucking Patrick... Stuart. God damn it. This isn't even necessarily the worst thing he's done this year. He also voiced the dragon in the 2017 movie Dragon Heart 4. I wasn't even aware that other Dragon Heart movies existed, but somehow they look way fucking worse than the one released in the 90s. And once again, Patrick fucking Stewart is in it. Does Patrick Stewart just owe people a lot of money? You were in Logan, and these were your next roles. So Matt is brought before Smiley, the most obviously bad guy ever, who tried to kill him with Terminators. Meh runs into Hand, who is also a faggot, and they both go into the basement with a bunch of other degenerates where they decide to reprogram themselves. This takes them out of their app and into the piracy app. In the piracy app, they try to find a hacker, but the majority of everyone in the piracy app are internet trolls, Trojan horses, viruses of all kinds, malware, and basically all the shit you don't want on your phone or your computer in the first place. What idiot thought that there was going to be an app based piracy app in the first place. And furthermore, why would the piracy app be filled with viruses and internet trolls? The trolls are possibly the worst part because holy shit does this tell you everything you need to know about Sony. The trolls are depicted as fat, literal neckbeards living in their mother's basements who hate women and want to make everyone else feel like shit. They may as well put MAGA hats and had them carrying confederate flags just to add a little bit more flavor. First off, it's not even what a troll does in the first place, and second, this message is so so ham-fisted and forced that I can't believe they signed off on putting this in the movie. No, wait. I can. A lot of these guys, these who... Terrific fellas! Yeah, who seem to have, I don't know, maybe very empty lives? Very empty lives? Are upset because they say, oh, well, we can't have female Ghostbusters because only men can fight imaginary ghosts in a make-believe movie. <laughs> yeah, but... But then what, what they don't say when they're typing is that, like, one minute after they type that, their mom's like, Get upstairs and take out the garbage! You're, you're 45 years old! And who gives a crap about anybody else at that point? And who gives a crap about anybody else? So they meet a hacker who is... Is Chloe, you can't keep blaming me and everybody for everything wrong in your life. You gotta blame somebody, otherwise it's all my fault. Fuck that. Yeah, great, because that's what everyone needs. Another blue-haired feminist cunt to make media as insufferable as possible. So cunt leads them into Candy Crush where Meg gets stuck in the game. They proceed to play and win and he gets out. Afterwards, she agrees to help them because she wants to get into the cloud where she can live her own make-believe world with her own gender pronouns and everything. She begins begins to tell them of her plan and pauses long enough for Matt to catch on to what she was saying. He asks if that was what she meant and she's all like, Yeah, but I 
would just say it. Men are always taking credit for what women do. Which A, isn't even true, and B, he wasn't even taking credit for that idea. You started telling him your plan, then you made a long pause, and he filled in the rest. He never said it was his idea, he literally just finished your own thought, and by his own admission, that was a good idea on your part. But no, we gotta push our feminist agenda. Doesn't matter if it's literally the dumbest thing ever. Meanwhile, Mez's parents, who have way more screen time than they actually deserve, and in fact have actually more screen time than the main fucking character himself, walk around drearily trying to find their son that neither of them actually give a shit about. Back in the real world that's really easy to forget even exists, Faggot is having problems with his phone and decides that because it keeps going off at the exact wrong moment, he's gonna go to the Apple store and get a factory reset, which is dumb because you can factory reset your phone anywhere. You literally just go to the settings and click reset. But no, we have to throw real world logic out the window so we can suffer through another 50 minutes of this dreck. So the gang makes it to Just Dance, where it's revealed that blue-haired feminist cunt is actually a pretty princess who doesn't want to be a pretty princess because gender roles. Keep in mind, for the bulk of this movie, this bitch is also leading him on to believe that she actually likes him, while also saying she doesn't want to be with anyone because she's a strong, independent woman. And just like women in the real world, she's actually just a fucking indecisive bitch that nobody would actually want to be around anyway. I'm so glad she's part of this movie. You add so much to the plot. So they narrowly escape the deletion of the Just Dance app, but Handjob is thrown into the trash bin. So they have to save him from the internet trolls, and they do that with about no effort and lock the trolls in the depths of the sewer anyway. Meanwhile, back at the Smiley Auschwitz, my viewer says, We must destroy the meh, and everything will be okay! But the shit points out that they're all going to die because the kid wants a factory reset. Then Smiley says, Excellent! This is going exactly according to plan! I shall unveil my greatest creation, an illegal virus robot to end the man once and for all! And finally, just like my orange-skinned overlord, I shall rule the world in a lack of health care options and raise taxes on the middle class! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for reminding me that this stupid bitch exists. So they all go- Hang on. Just a dream. If you're gonna steal my bed, you could at least try to look a little happier! That's it, I'm done doing nice things for you! I just sleep on the cold hard floor and this is the kind of thing you get me! Jeez, Lucy, do you have to be so loud first thing in the morning? If you two are gonna keep freeloading off me, I- You lost your mind?! <laughs> <laughs> So they all go to Spotify in a boat for no reason, and then they all go into the Dropbox where they need to hack through a firewall. This hacking through the firewall entails them using a bunch of random passwords and hoping that one of them will work. That's... Not even close to how hacking works. You'd think that Sony would be aware of this considering that they have the worst firewalls in existence. So after kicking Mez's ass a thousand times, they finally make it into the cloud where they can reprogram Mez to be a real Mez. But Mez doesn't want to be a real Mez anymore because he's fallen deeply in love with feminism. And we all know what that means. But feminism rejects him because he is a man and therefore inferior to the vagina master race. Long live menstrual cycles. This act of rejection turns Matt into a real Matt, and then he's captured so he can be publicly executed. So feminism breaks character when it benefits her most so she can ride the Twitter blacklist back to save her friend that nobody fucking cares about. So Matt is about to be murdered by the Nazi war machine, and just like the real Donnie Trump, evil wins once again. But not so close, Handy and Cunt save the day by pressing the off switch. But they're too late, and the phone is being factory reset, so they have to send out one last emoji to save the day. So I guess the phone just acts on its own without human interaction. Right, okay. So they send an interactive emoji to the bitch the kid wants to fuck, and then she says she's really into him because he's expressive and outgoing. Please fucking kill me, this is the dumbest shit I've ever fucking seen. And because of this, the kid unplugs his phone and stops the factory reset. That's not how factory resets work. Thus wasting his time and money and allowing the emojis to have a dance. And Trump was defeated on this fine day. God, these movies fucking sucked. Why did you vote for these? Do you really hate me that? 
that bad? Why is Patrick Stewart taking so many shitty roles? Why does Sony think that if they keep making shitty political movies, people will like them? Why do grown men like My Little Pony? I genuinely don't understand why. That movie was garbage. Why did Michael Pena agree to be in that movie? Why are good actors in general signing up for these piece of shit films that are way fucking beneath them? Do you think Sony released Blade Runner to make up for the shit stains he keeps putting out there? Are they being cucked at the studio, or are they doing the cucking? Why were, like, half the characters in MLP furries? Also, is there porn of the burb lady? Because currently, my resident burb lady won't send me porn when I ask her to, and because no harm or foul isn't updated nearly enough for me to jack off to it regularly, I kinda need something to get off to. What part of the emoji movie was actually supposed to be battling against Trump? Because that message just didn't make sense at all. Unless feminism was the message, in which case, bravo, you fucking failed once again. Is the meme movie a thing that's actually gonna happen? Because that's dumb. And also brilliant, but mostly dumb. Why are there dragon heart sequels and also who keeps funding them? The first one wasn't even particularly good. How's the CGI worse than the one from the 90s? And why are the knights like 14 years old? Find out next time when I eventually force myself to watch that piece of garbage. Because of course I'll watch it. I always will because I hate myself and I like to experience my own suffering. Also, if a cat boy fucks a pony, does that count as yiffing or clopping? What the fuck is this? I'm asking for a friend.